Hello and welcome to St Mary the Virgin, East Preston's Nine Lessons and Carols, the movie. Most of this year has been a bizarre experience of doing things differently and Christmas is no exception. Of course, Christmas hasn't been cancelled, but we have to celebrate things slightly differently this year. So from the comfort of your own home, possibly with a glass of mulled wine and a mince pie in hand, I invite you on a journey, not just a journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, but a journey round our homes as we celebrate together the greatest story ever told. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in the manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among his people, for unity within the church he came to build, and especially within this village of East Preston and the Diocese of Chichester. And because this, of all things, would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of David's fragile house of hope and expectation, in the time of empires your word is borne to those who have no place and sung to those who watch in the wild. May his birth unsettle our world with hidden glory and untold peace. Through Jesus Christ, the child of promise. Amen. We are at the start of a journey in nine readings, telling how God's purposes are revealed, dashed and restored. We learn first about God's creativity, seen in the goodness of his world and human beings made in his image. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. Here endeth the first reading. Joe. 
humanity and our inability to live within God-given limits. The consequence is a broken relationship with God and an uncertain future. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Then the Lord God said, See, The man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might reach out his hand, and take also from the tree of life, and eat, and live for ever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden, to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim, and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. Here ends the second reading.
From the dark time of Isaiah the prophet comes a message of hope. A child will grow into a king, bringing peace and justice. We hear the expectation, the lineage and the titles, but not yet his name. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the third reading. More is learnt of the coming ruler, the bearer of great hope and promise. He may be greater even than King David, the son of Jesse, renowned as Israel's finest ruler. And a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with a rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the wean child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here ends the fourth reading. called like a prophet of old and she learns she will bear God's son. Mary is not the first to be perplexed and then reassured but her willing response is unsurpassable. In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary and he came to her and said greetings favoured one the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be the son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne to his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said, 
Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to you and your word. Then the angel departed her. Here ends the fifth reading. As the Roman Emperor orders a registration, the birth of Mary's child takes place. Although the crowds push the Holy Family to the margins, the eternal peace of Jesus will outlast all rulers and empires. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Here ends the sixth reading. Shepherds watched their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. And glory shone around, and glory shone around. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. Said he, for a mighty dread had seized their troubled mind. That tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. To you and all mankind. To you and all mankind. That tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. Savior, who is Christ the Lord, 
and this shall be the sign. And this shall be the sign. And this shall be the sign. The Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign. The heavenly babe you there shall find to human view displayed. Meanly wrapped in swathing bands and in a manger laid, and in a manger laid, and in a manger laid. Oh, meanly wrapped in swathing bands and in a manger laid. Thus spake the seraph, and forthwith appeared a shining throng. Address their joyful song. Address their joyful song. Address their joyful song. Of angels praising God who thus address their joyful song. All glory be to God on high and on the earth be peace. Good will henceforth. To men begin and never cease, begin and never cease, begin and never cease. Good will henceforth from heaven to men begin and never cease. The seventh reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 to 16. Jesus' ancestor David was a shepherd, and it is to shepherds an angel brings good news. When the Lord expected Saviour is announced, they hurry to see the face of God in the face of a newborn child. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, of the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing which has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Here ends the seventh reading. Little donkey, little donkey on the dusty road, got to keep on plodding onward with your precious load. Been a long time, little donkey, through the winter's night. Don't give up now, little donkey. Hands in sight. Ring out those bells tonight, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Follow that star tonight, Bethlehem. 
Sing for us signs to bring them here. Ring out those bells tonight, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Follow that star tonight, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Do not falter, little donkey. And the star ahead, it will guide you, little donkey, to a cattle shed. Little donkey, little donkey, had a heavy day. Little donkey, carry Mary safely on her way. Visitors come from the east, and their joy and generosity frustrate the scheming King Herod. In their journey and their worship, we sense Jesus' significance beyond Israel to the ends of the earth. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler. He is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh. Here ends the eighth reading.
our final reading, we hear echoes of the first. God's purposes in creation are embodied in the human life of Jesus, the Christ. By his glory, our relationship with God is revived and restored. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends the ninth reading. So oh.
exhortation. Sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Let us pray to Jesus, born in Bethlehem. The response to the prayers, when I say Jesus Saviour, the response is, hear our prayer. Jesus, born in a stable, give courage to all who are homeless. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, for whom the angels sang, Give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, before whom the wise men knelt, Give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, give the glory of resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, Saviour, Child of Mary, you know us and love us and share our lives. Hear our prayers. Glory to you forever. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those for whom you've prayed, this day and forevermore. Amen. He missed the Christmas. What have you bought me? Have you bought me the world all in one? Hey, Mr. Christmas, what can you tell me? Can you tell me that peace just begun? Can you show me the war that might end right away? Will it be ten score years or no more than a day? Will you bring home the weary forever? I pray that you can. Hey, Mr. Christmas, so many people who have all that they want all they need so feed the hungry befriend the lonely and bring warmth to the cold refugee for the world has been here for so millions of years but it's so little time that mankind has appeared how can so short a time end in so many tears? Yes, it can. He missed the Christmas. What can you take now? Can you take the unlawful and 
mean? Don't bring them back now. I'm less forgiven. Make it all so much more than a dream. Let us lift up our hearts to the one up above. After all he once sent us, the one that he loved, and the least we can do is show him we love him. We can. Yes, we can.